In this video, we'll write the name for CUSO4.5H2O. So we're going to treat this in two parts. First, we'll do the CUSO4, and then we'll deal with the 5H2O. So for the CUSO4, let's first write the name of the metal as it appears on the periodic table. So we'll write copper, and then we have this SO4. This is a polyatomic ion. So you either memorize that SO4 is the sulfate ion, or if you're allowed, you can look it up. So this group of nonmetals here, we're going to write the name sulfate. So we have copper sulfate so far, but copper is a transition metal. So we have to figure out the charge on the copper based on what it's bonded to here. So we're going to find the charge on our transition metal based on the total charge of what it's bonded to. The sulfate ion is always 2 minus, the whole thing. This is a good one to remember. So the copper has to be 2 plus. Since we have the transition metal, we write a Roman numeral 2. We put it in parentheses. So this first part is copper 2 sulfate. So the name for CuSO4 is copper 2 sulfate. The 2 refers to the charge on the transition metal. When we see this dot here, this means that we have a hydrate. We have water molecules around the compound, in this case, the copper 2 sulfate. In fact, we have five water molecules around the copper 2 sulfate. So we'll use a prefix for five and put that in front of the word hydrate. So here's a list of the prefixes, and we can see penta right here. So we're going to call this copper 2 sulfate penta, and then because it's water, we call it hydrate. If it was 6, it would be hexahydrate. 10 would be decahydrate. This is Dr. B with the name for CUSO4.5H2O. Thanks for watching.